Good morning. The St. Regis Parish Faith Community gathers for the liturgical celebration of the fourth Sunday in the Easter season. We ask you to fully participate in the liturgy as a community by praying and singing together. There are three announcements. The Mother Daughter Choir will be singing at the 9.30 a.m. Mass on Mother's Day next Sunday on May 14th. Just come at 9 a.m. for a short practice. That's Mother Daughter Choir will sing on Mother's Day next Sunday at the 9.30 a.m. Mass. Practice is at 9 a.m. The Knights of Columbus will have their Mother's Day and family pancake breakfast beginning at 8 a.m. and continuing until 11 a.m. Pancakes, sausage, eggs, orange juice, and coffee will be served by the Knights. That's pancake breakfast on next Sunday, Mother's Day, from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. The Parish Council will meet this Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the conference room. Again, Parish Council meeting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Also, one of our first communicants has a birthday today, the same day as her first communion. We'd like to wish a happy birthday to Kalina Maljan.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And with your spirit. So nice to see all of you here today, the first communicants and their families and friends. What a beautiful day uh, to share God's love, to experience his love. And one of the ways that we experience his love is through his, the reconciliation that he extends to us for those times that we have sinned. So we turn to him now as we acknowledge our faults and ask him for that mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you guard us with the shepherd's love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you laid down your life for your sheep. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have come so that we may have life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring each of us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of Saint Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Sisters, may the Lord be with each of you. And now let us listen attentively to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he, when he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. And so Jesus said to them again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and to slaughter and to destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. You. Morning, everyone. Can I see a hand uh, of all the first communicants? Should be ten of you, ten hands I should see go up. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, hands down. I'm going to talk to the adults first, not only the parents of the kids, but all the adults. Okay, so that's everybody here. And then I'm going to talk to the ten youngsters. Okay, so that's the format for today. Good shepherd. Well, let's just say shepherd. Forget the good for a moment. God bless you. When we think of shepherds, what is the first thing that comes to anybody's mind, adults only? When we think of a shepherd, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Okay, sheep, okay. 
Guidance, okay, good. Any, anyone else? Protector. Protector, good. Leader, thank you. One more? Seeker of the lost. Okay. So we got a lot of definitions of what a shepherd can be or do. Now, next question for adults again. Who do you see as individuals who would fulfill those roles? Who do you see as leaders or protectors or uh, finders of those who are lost? What kind, who would be people that you see doing that kind of stuff? The president. The president? Okay. Hopefully he should be, okay. Or she, whatever the case may be. Okay, anyone else? Who? Oh, you guys are better than last night. It took them forever to get to that point. Good. I'll come back to that. Okay. President, parents, anyone else? Pastors, ooh, Pope, good, bishops, teachers, anyone who is in a position of authority over other people should be viewed as not only a shepherd, but a good shepherd. We brought out one of the Christmas decorations just for this Sunday, since it is Good Shepherd Sunday. And all of these are correct answers. Anyone who is in position of authority. Years ago, when I was in high school, we had, and keep in mind, any of you who had been to Catholic high schools back in the 1960s or 70s, individuals filled many roles. And a lot of times the football coach or the basketball coach, in our case, was also the history teacher and phys ed teacher. Okay, so this one individual, and I said this a couple of years ago, and a person happened to be sitting here who knew who I was talking about, may happen again. He always would talk about the dangers and the ills of tobacco use. And he did everything with his team, as well as in the classes, to discourage tobacco usage, either smoking tobacco or smokeless. God bless you. But he always had a cigar hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> so one day in class, this one girl, boy, was she gutsy. She raised her hand. And yes, young lady. She says, I have a question for you, sir. And he says, go ahead. He says, you're always talking about the dangers of tobacco use and why we shouldn't get hooked on it but you always have a cigar hanging out of your mouth. How do you explain that? Well, he turned about 50 shades of red, and one of the things that he had to get in a practice of because of the nuns and the priests is he had a rather foul mouth with his language. And so that whenever we'd be playing games so that other teams wouldn't hear what he was saying, he would literally jam his whole fist into his mouth and bite down and it just sounded like a lion growling. So when that girl asked that question, that's what he did. And when he finally calmed down a little bit, he looked at her and said, young lady, I want you to learn one thing out of this class. Do as I say and not as I do. And at that point, I lost all respect for the man and I never saw him, I, I never viewed him rather as a teacher. In my mind, he was a Pharisee that Jesus always condemns. Teaches one thing, but does not do what he teaches. And this is what a good shepherd is not. A good shepherd does not teach one thing and do something else. A good shepherd practices what they teach. And so parents, and now I'm going to be addressed in not only these parents, but all parents, and I have this here because I'm not checking up on my email, <clears throat> but so that I have the gospel passage ready right away. There it is. Jesus says, Amen, I say to you, who does not, 
enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs elsewhere is a thief. In the days of Jesus, there was this wall or fence or whatever you want to call it surrounding the sheepfold, uh, the, the corral rather, where the sheep would go at night. And a lot of times there would be several groups of sheep that would go in there. And there was only one way in and one way out. The way in was the only way out, one entrance, and it was only wide enough for one sheep to get through. That way they would be able to count them as they were going through. And at night, rather than having a gate, one of the sheep, and they would take turns, one of the sheep would literally haunch down and go to sleep in that opening. The reason being, if one of the sheep tried to get out, it would have to hop over or at least nudge the shepherd, and he would be awakened and lead him back in. Similarly, because the fence was so high, if a thief tried to get in, the thief would also awaken the shepherd who was sleeping there. Jesus is telling us that he is that gate that protects us from leaving the pasture as well as protecting us from other voices who try to distract us from the one true voice. And in today's world, we are all surrounded and bombarded with a lot of voices that are not of Jesus, that are not of God, that are not the truth. There are a lot of good voices out there in addition to his, but there are a lot of distractions. And on these devices, we can easily become distracted from what we are doing. Now granted, there's a lot of good stuff on here. You can have the Bible app, you can have daily devotional apps or messages coming in. I just got now tweets so that I can check every morning at 7.30 what the Pope has to say for the day. But we have to be careful of the things that are on here that we don't want, adults and kids alike. And as parents, whenever you had your child baptized, one of the statements and questions raised was, in asking to have your child baptized, you are assuming the responsibility of raising them in the faith as Jesus teaches us. And you all responded when we asked, do you understand what you're about to undertake? Parents responded, I do, or yes, I understand. To be a parent today, or any time, is an awesome responsibility. It takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of stamina, and it also takes a lot of, oh, what's the word I want to say? Almost standing alone in a world that is saying, ah, go ahead with everybody else. Parents want to be friends of their kids first, but in reality, parents need to be parents first. I can you remember years ago when I was newly ordained and up at St. Agnes, we were getting ready for the summer festival, and some of the kids, one family of kids was coming and sampling all the uh, baked goods that were outside for sale after the mass, and they would take one bite out of the cookie, put it back on, try another one, one bite, don't like it, put it back. And the mom was standing there where I was with one of the other fellas while Father Tom was having the mass. And she says, I don't understand my kids. I just can't get them to understand how to do things the right way. Look at them over there destroying all those cookies. And I looked at her and I said, well, who's in charge? What do you think her answer was? They are. So I looked at her and I said, well, there's your answer. How can a four-year-old know how to be in charge? And that's why God gave parents this awesome role to follow his example. Because kids don't know right from wrong. And even though we sometimes want to be their friend, we have to teach them what's right and wrong, even to the point of, yeah, I got to get to church on Sundays. Yeah, I got to get my kids to faith formation. It's wrong to steal. It's wrong to fight with your friends. 
Let's look at your phone and see what's on it. We got to do things sometimes that aren't popular. But then again, these are not the things that are going to get us to heaven. It's the word of God that's going to get us to heaven. The narrow gate. And so parents, I congratulate you for the work you have done so far in bringing your kids to this point. As I said earlier, it's an awesome responsibility. But when we look back on the years, we're able to smile and see the good that we've accomplished. So continue the good work that you have done and know that you are all in our prayers so, so that those prayers and the power and grace of God can support you through the upcoming years as you continue to instill the faith of God, the love of God, the love that he has for us. This is what today is all about, celebrating his love, a love that is so great that he gave himself for us, and the love is so great that he nourishes us with his body and blood in the Eucharist, which these kids are going to receive for the first time today, and hopefully for many days after today, so that they can be strengthened in a world that is many times challenging to live in. Okay, I'm done with the adults. Ooh, okay, we got 10 kids here today. I think you all have some kind of a breakfast or a lunch or some kind of a party afterwards, right? So if you want to get there and not be late, I need everybody to answer right away, okay? So I'll have 10 questions, and kids, if you get a little nervous, that's okay. Moms and dads, you can whisper in the ears of the kids what the answer is. That way we'll get out of here quicker and you'll get to your lunches on time. How's that sound? Deal? Deal. Okay, first question for just the 10 communicants. What is happening today that is so special here in church? Why are you all dressed up so nice? Yeah. Body and blood of Jesus, also known as First Communion. You can keep your hand down for the rest of the questions. We got nine more to go. Okay, you did good. Okay, so what is so important about receiving the body and blood of Jesus? Mary. Jesus is coming down into our hearts. Two, now we've got eight to go. Man, we're making progress here. Okay, why do you want Jesus to come into your heart? What will he do for you? Yes, thank you, Dad, also. Uh, you, you whisper like I whisper. <laughs> Loud, yeah. Now, now, the question is, when we say strength, now we're down to seven, this kind of strength, or what kind of strength are we talking about? Anybody, any of the other seven? What kind of strength are we talking about? Go ahead, Levi, if you want to. That way, in a few years, you won't have to answer. Okay. What kind of strength are we talking about? Yo, one of the twins. Yes, sir. Strength to make good choices. Thank you. Down to six. Okay. Uh, now, I'm on a playground after lunch at school. We're playing, or at least we're supposed to be playing, but I start fighting with one of my other uh, friends at the school. Is that a good choice to fight with my buddy? You already answered. No. Okay. What would we want to do if we don't want to fight? We're down to five now. Instead of fighting, what do we want to do? Talk and play. Okay, down to four. Uh, another good choice we want to make. I'm in classroom. We're having a test, and I forgot to study last night because I was busy watching TV or on a computer or something else. And so I start stretching my neck to look at the answers on the next desk. Is that a good choice? No. Okay. Good. Okay, now I need to know who has not answered a question yet. One, two, three. Okay. Hey, we're doing good here. So making good choices is, see, how do I want to ask this question? Okay, let's put it this way. What Jesus teaches us is we need to live our lives in a special way, and we want to fill in the blank others. And it's a, it's a four-letter word that Jesus always uses. Love. I like that word. So... Two hands left. Tell me what love means to you. 
being nice to them. And what does love mean to you? I, I did that on, t on purpose. What does, wrong shoes today. What does love mean to you? Being nice and helping. It looks like you want to say one more thing. That's it. That was the last thing he wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, so today is a special day, and the strength that we get, not only you as youngsters, but every time we receive Jesus in communion, that strength is that love that Jesus came to show us when he was the good shepherd, and he still is the good shepherd, and during our liturgy of the word, our responsorial song was from Psalm 23, which talks about how the good shepherd is always taking care of us. You all did a wonderful job. Again, parents, thank you for the work you did. Teachers, catechists, uh, DRE, all of you, thank you for the hard work that has gone into preparing for this day. Enjoy it, celebrate it, live it every day. Live that love, live that care each and every day of your lives for others as he has taught us. Let us stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. The response is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that, as the body of Christ on earth, we may faithfully and boldly proclaim the truth of the resurrection, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may they seek wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit as they try to solve the problems that plague our world, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and dying, may the knowledge of the resurrection Give them strength and hope that they will someday see God with their own eyes, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our 18 children receiving First Communion, may they always cherish the sacrament of unity they receive for the first time this weekend, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, may they continue to bring their children to Mass and encourage them to use the strength and comfort found in receiving the body and blood of Christ throughout their lives, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died marked with the sign of faith, especially Loretta Broskovich, may they have eternal life in heaven, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. During this Mass, we remember in a particular way Anne Shola and the living and deceased members of St. Regis Parish, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. We pray. For the safety of our men and women in the armed services, we pray. For those whom the Lord may be calling to serve as a priest, brother, and sister, deacon, or other related ministry within the life of the church, that they be willing to follow the call of the Lord in a spirit of generosity, we pray. And for our Jewish brothers and sisters, that peace be restored to their homeland, we pray. 
Praise the Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, as we come before you, we give you thanks for the many ways you share your love with each of us. And we pray, Lord, that each of us be willing to follow your example as you as the Good Shepherd in living that love in our lives for one another, in the way we care for each other, in the way we reach out and encourage one another or comfort each other. And we do all this in your holy name and unite it with the name of Mary. Amen. Amen. Acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands. May the praise and the glory of His name. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts that we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> when we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church that is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Edward, our Bishop, Lawrence, our retired Bishop, and all bishops, religious, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, St. Regis, and with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we join our voices in the prayer that Jesus gives to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's take the time to share his peace with each other. Peace be with you and good joy. Peace be with you and good joy. Peace be with you and a good joy. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You can go back to your family's house if you want to. Peace be with you. Peace be with you and peace be with you. Peace be with you, and peace be with you. Behold, this truly is Jesus. Behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
The communion hymn is number 643, Song of the Body of Christ, number 643. <laughs> We come to 
advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our regs uh, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Saint Michael, the Archangel. Hail. 
Attached to your bulletin this weekend, you're going to find a flyer like this. Uh, and what it is talking about is the Trinity Dome at America's Catholic Church. If any of you have ever had the uh, privilege to visit Washington, D.C., more than likely you also stopped in at the Immaculate Conception Shrine, uh, the national shrine of, for the country under the, patron, uh, under the title of Immaculate Conception. Our founding uh, bishops and founders of the country saw it important that the country be placed under the patronage of um, Mary under the title of the Immaculate Conception. And that is uh, this cathedral, this shrine, has been under construction for about 100 years. It's not completed yet, still working. And this dome, which, as I read this correct, is the principal dome over the main altar, uh, is going to depict the Trinity. And this spells it all out for you. But anyhow, some of you or some of you may have had family members a generation or so ago that made donations. Uh, I know my family made donations about 50 years ago for the completion of a couple of the areas of the shrine. Uh, but Bishop Molesic tells us in this current uh, Catholic accent, Mary's Shrine, also known as America's Catholic Church, is an authentic reflection of the diverse tapestry of the cultures and ethnicities of the United States in its more than 70 chapels that are dedicated to honoring Mary. This place of divine worship also witness to, witnesses to the strength of our faith in the Son of Mary, Jesus our Lord. He tells us that the National Collection for the Trinity Dome offers each of you, the faithful, an opportunity to leave a lasting legacy by honoring our Catholic heritage and entrusting themselves and their families to the Mother of God. And he think, the bishop thanks us in advance for our support of this collection. This is a one-time collection, all things going well. The dome, the mosaic dome, will be completed in the year 2020. And uh, the one-time collection will be taken up on Mother's Day, which is next Sunday. Attached to your bulletin, along with this flyer, is an envelope that you can use next Sunday when you come to church to help make a donation uh, towards the completion of this dome. In your seat, you will find a little pamphlet like this. And as you open it up, you will see a picture of the Immaculate Conception on one side and a prayer on the right side. I ask if all of us can join together in that prayer. Most Holy Trinity, our Father in heaven, who chose Mary as the fairest of your daughters, Holy Spirit, who chose Mary as your spouse, God the Son, who chose Mary as your mother, in union with Mary, we adore your majesty and acknowledge you supreme, eternal dominion and authority. Most Holy Trinity, we put the United States of America into the hands of Mary Immaculate in order that she may present the country to you. Through her, we wish to thank you for the great resources of this land and for the freedom which has been its heritage. Through the intercession of Mary, have mercy on the Catholic Church in America. Grant us peace, have mercy on our president and all the officers of our government. Grant us a fruitful economy that is born of justice and charity. Have mercy on capital and industry and labor. Protect the family life of the nation. Guard the innocence of our children. Grant the precious gift of many religious vocations. Through the intercession of our mother, have mercy on the sick, the poor, the tempted, sinners, on all who are in need. Mary Immaculate Virgin, our mother, patroness of our land, we praise you and honor you and give ourselves to you. Protect us from every harm. Pray for us that acting always according to your will and the will of your divine Son, we may live and die pleasing to God. Amen. We're going to be using this prayer again, again next weekend, so I just ask if we could leave these in the pews until next weekend, and then we can take them home if we want. Um, all of you who are involved with the First Communion, again, thank you for the work that uh, was put into this day, preparing your youngsters 
Uh, again, you did a very wonderful job. Uh, Karen has been taking some uh, still photos. They'll be on our web page. All you got to do is go to the home page, go over to where it says media, hit the drop box. There's going to be two items in the drop box. One is going to be a gallery, I believe is how it's still labeled, and the other is going to be video. Both the still photos and a complete video of today's mass will be available for your viewing later in the week. I'm not sure, will they be able to copy it onto a disc if they want to burn it onto their own disc? It might be possible. If, you, if you're a little bit uh, computer savvy, you might be able to figure out how to do that. But later in the week, uh, the Mass will be on and you'll be able to observe it again. Have a great day. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep whom you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we bow our heads as we invoke the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. Amen. May he let his face shine upon us and show us his mercy. Amen. And may he turn his countenance towards us and grant us his peace. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a nice week. Thank you. The closing hymn is number 573, All You on Earth, number 573. Share.